All right, here we go. We're going to start another way of solving systems. Um, this is in part 3.2 or section 3.2 of your textbook. So the book calls it solving systems algebraically. And the reason why is there are two methods of solving systems uh, using algebra. The first section we did 3.1 was just using graphing and finding intersection points. But now we want to try to use for more complicated systems that we don't want to have to graph algebraic methods. Okay, and the first method is the substitution method. So this video is just going to strictly talk about that. I like to break it down, even though your book does the two methods in one section. I like to break it down and show you each individually, and then we can talk about which is better to use when. Okay, so for today it's substitution, and here's the steps to do it. I know some of you like the step-by-step, play-by-play method of how to do some algebraic different tricks in this class. I know I'm a big fan of the recipes too. So here's the recipe for the substitution method. First, we want to solve one equation for one of the unknown variables. Because remember, a system is usually two equations using the same two unknowns. That's how we defined it in the last section. So what I'm saying is you pick an equation, and you get one of the variables isolated all by itself. Once you have that information, you can substitute into the second equation and solve for the remaining variable. Because essentially what's going to happen, as you'll see in a few seconds when we do an example or two, when you do this substitution, you turn an equation with two unknowns into an equation with just one unknown. After you determine that unknown value, you can then substitute it in and get the other variable and then find the solution of the system. Okay? It looks a little technical, but we're going to do a couple practice problems here in the video and we'll hopefully clear everything up. So here's the first one. This is an easy example first. y equals 2x minus 10, and y equals negative 4x plus 8. Here's why it's an easy substitution problem. Because each of the equations already has one of its unknowns isolated. In fact, it has the same unknown isolated. It has y. Probably I would have, if I were you, before you learn the substitution method, this is a great candidate just to graph, because they're already in y equals form. You can graph them and be done with it and find the intersection point. But I know not everybody's a big fan of graphing. So here's a different way you can do it. Now what I want to do is notice the fact that y equals 2x minus 10 and y also equals negative 4x plus 8. These are basically like synonyms if you want to use the English word, the vocab word. y is the same thing as 2x minus 10. y is also the same thing as negative 4x plus 8. So how about we just replace 2x minus 10 with one of the y's in the equation, like I did there in yellow. So that means we can now rewrite 2x minus 10 equals negative 4x plus 8. Now look what's over on the right side of the screen. It's an equation that has just one unknown variable. And I know everybody in this class can solve that equation. So let's do it. Let's add 4x to both sides, and then we get 6x minus 10 equals 8. We bring eight, 10 over to the right side, and we get 6x equals 18. Divide through by 6, x equals 3. There you go. So now I know that x equals 3 is going to make both equations work. But what's going to be the y value? Well, we'll take it and plug it into what I just highlighted there in yellow, 2x minus 10. You could have also plugged it into negative 4x plus 8. It's a system. They have to both hold for that value, so it really doesn't matter which one you use. I'm going to use 2x minus 10. And I get that y is 6 minus 10, or negative 4. So my final answer, writing it as an ordered pair, is 3, negative 4. I tend to write solutions to systems in ordered pairs, because how did we start this whole unit? By looking at an intersection point of those two lines. And since we're talking about a point, points are usually written as ordered pairs. Okay, So this is just telling me that when x is 3 and y is negative 4, both equations are true. Let's look at the second one. x plus 5y equals 3, and x minus 2y equals negative 8. All right, so this is different. We don't have a variable by itself. Both of these equations are written in standard form, if you remember that word from chapter 2. So we've got to pick an equation, and we need to isolate for one of the variables. Like I said at the beginning, it doesn't matter which one you choose. It doesn't matter which equation you pick, and it doesn't matter which variable you isolate from that equation. However, 
there are some strategies to work a little bit smarter and not harder to do the algebra in the substitution method. Here's the first strategy that I'm going to show you in this video to make substitution easy. If there is a variable with a coefficient of 1 in the problem, that is going to be the variable I want to solve for when I use substitution. In this case, we have a variable with coefficient 1. It's the x in the first equation. So that's what I want to solve for. I want to get that variable that I just highlighted in yellow all by itself. So I'll subtract 5y from both sides, and I get x equals 3 minus 5y. So now that I have one variable isolated, I'm going to take its, its synonym, its other name, and its other name is 3 minus 5y, and I am going to take that and replace it for the x in the second equation. And now I can rewrite that second equation as 3 times the quantity 3 minus 5y, close parentheses, minus 2y equals negative 8. One equation, one unknown, let's solve it. Distribute the 3, combine like terms, bring that 9 over, negative 17y equals negative 17, divide through, and we get y equals 1. All right, we're halfway home. We've got to get the value of x that corresponds to y equals 1. And the way I do that, plug her in. x equals 3 minus 5 times 1, or 3 minus 5. So x is negative 2. So if we go back to our ordered pair notation, negative 2, 1 is the solution to the system. Not bad, right? I hope. All right, let's look at what I would consider the hardest kind of substitution problem last. The video, I tried to go from easy to medium to hard. So here's the hard example. 2a plus 8b equals negative 8, and 3a minus 5b equals 22. Now, it's not hard because I changed the letters. The letters are really irrelevant, as you've figured out at this point in the school year. They just replace numbers. What makes it hard is that trick that I used in the, the last example of getting a variable with coefficient 1 to be my choice for substitution isn't here anymore. Every variable has a coefficient. Okay. So what I want to do instead is I kind of want to look at the numbers and I want to think about which variable can I choose to solve for that would avoid giving me some fractions because I know how much people don't like fractions. Look, like I said, knock your socks off. If you want to solve for 5b in the second equation, you can do that. You're going to get some fractions though. There's one choice that's going to prevent fractions. If you notice do you notice how in the first equation, every coefficient is an even number? So, if I solve for 2a, or rather just a in the first equation, I will have whole numbers when I divide through by 2, because they're all even numbers in the problem. So I want to do that. Let's solve for 2a. We get 2a equals negative 8b minus 8. Now let's divide through by 2 a is negative 4b minus 4. So now I want to take that information and plug it in for a. 3 times the quantity negative 4b minus 4 minus 5b equals 22. I'll distribute the 3, negative 12b minus 12 minus 5b equals 22. I'll combine my like terms, negative 17b minus 12 equals 22. And then I just isolate my b. Divide through by negative 17, b is negative 2. So again, halfway there, we know b is negative 2, so now we've got to get the corresponding a value, and we plug her in. a is negative 4 times negative 2, minus 4, or 8 minus 4, or just plain 4. So now when it comes to writing our answer, what I like to do, because we're not using x and y anymore, is I like to give the reader kind of a key to how I'm writing my ordered pair. So that's why I start out with that a comma b as one ordered pair, equals 4, negative 2. When it's x and y, it's pretty much common sense that we know that the x comes first and the y comes second. That's the way we've been graphing points and graphing lines for years now. But when we change the letters, we have to kind of give the reader a heads up. Hey, I'm making a my first coordinate. I'm making b my second coordinate because we can't assume anything when we write work and we show work and we give answers. Okay? So, hopefully you think that this is cooler than the back side of the pillow. If you don't, there's other methods that we're going to learn for solving systems. But for right now, I want you to try some practice examples. And if you have any questions, we'll talk about them in class. 
Otherwise, look forward to seeing you in class. Have a great evening.